Women are calling high value men losers. In Japan, there is a term for men who aren't necessarily successful with the ladies in their home country, and they come to Japan and they are really, really successful with the Japanese ladies. And this term is LBH or losers back home. Women are calling high value men losers. Yeah, guys, this is actually happening. When I first showed you, featured this video a couple of months ago, Mayumi was absolutely up in arms. Watch this video to understand why women are calling high value men losers and the implications it is going to have on society. Now, let's just go ahead and jump right back into the video. So these LBH or losers back home, they would not slay at home like in the US, but in Japan, they slay and believe me, they slay. I know, I know men who have a roster, a roster of Japanese women. And some of these men have been with hundreds, hundreds, multiple hundreds of Japanese women and it shocked me, but now I get it. I guess if you're an Asian woman that grew up in an Asian country and is only used to seeing Asian people, maybe you are very intrigued by a white guy. So there is a difference in standards. In the US, if you were to ask who's the hottest male Hollywood actor, you'd probably hear Bradley Cooper or Brad Pitt. Uh, but in Japan, they say it's Eddie Redmayne. Yeah, guys, these individuals are definitely shattering the relationship between men and women as quickly as they possibly can. They absolutely do not like us. And one of the things that's quite interesting is, you know, if we look at some pictures of Eddie Redmayne, what does Eddie Redmayne actually look like? This is Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne is absolutely, is a very, very uh, handsome Englishman. He's one of the top actors in Hollywood. He's one of the leading actors of the, um, of, of the millennial and Gen X generation. So he's actually a little bit older. He's around 40 years old. And he's, yeah, he's a Xennial. And he is at the absolute top. He's one of the most distinguished actors in Hollywood. And he's he's extremely fit. He's he has he has abs, like literal abs, and he has these, he has the cheekbones that everyone is dying for. He looks like an absolute ch absolute Chad. And they consider Eddie Redmayne a loser. Eddie Redmayne, they consider Eddie Redmayne ugly. Okay? He's wealthy, one of the most distinguished actors in Hollywood. Distinguished actors of our generation. Or one of the most handsome actors of our generation. He's very his looks are very distinctive, which makes him very very popular. This guy, this look at this guy very carefully is a loser back home. He is a loser. This is what they are calling losers. Okay? And of course, these women, you know, like this woman, for example, she was called out on this. And what does she end up doing? She simply doubled down. I did not invent this term. So unfortunately, I don't have the power to change it. And if you don't believe me, here it is on the internet from 2006. You can also find it on Urban Dictionary many times. And there are plenty of results on Google. Unfortunately, not me. Also, I don't think this term is exclusive to Japan. I wouldn't doubt that it's also used in other Asian countries like Thailand or, I don't know, China. So I don't think the Japanese people invented it either. If you watched my video and thought, oh, I'm going to Japan to slay, one thing I didn't mention is that these men that I referenced are fluent in Japanese. So if you don't speak any Japanese, you only speak English, and you come to Japan hoping to meet Japanese girls, you might be disappointed because Japanese people not only don't really speak English, but they're scared to speak English. So if you approach Japanese women only speaking English, it will intimidate them. They are already very shy and timid, and you will have a hard time breaking the ice. Uh, so if you're really serious, you should probably learn Japanese. But uh, I never, never thought the video would turn out the way it did. Guys. These women are doing the devil's work. They are doing the devil's work. You know, I talk, I do talk to my Yumi sometimes privately. And one thing I've asked me, one thing I've asked my Yumi about is why is her English so good? And she gave me like a long explanation of why her English is so good, why she's able to use Amer English puns so well, is able to sound 
like a, she sounds like a native speaker or a or better than many native speakers. And you know, it's because of her education, her upbringing, her parents. So to say that Japanese people cannot speak English is ridiculous. Some of the top creators on YouTube are Japanese people who speak English, fluent English, who've lived in Japan their entire lives. This is insane. Guys, these women in Western society are trying to create rifts between men and women all over the world. They're trying to create division between men and women all over the world. And what they are really trying to do is to, is to shame men into compliance, obedience, and demoralization so that they would never think of doing what the passport kings have done and leaving you, the Western society and going overseas and finding someone who is fit, feminine, and friendly. Guys, we need to stop messing around with these broke women, by the way. Like, we have to stop messing around with these broke women. Like, if you want to be out, if you want a woman, like, you know, I can't tell you what to do. Stop messing with these broke girls, y'all. Stop messing with these broke girls. I'm just being very, very honest with you. Stop it. Stop doing it. There's no reason why you cannot find yourself a woman who is fit, feminine, friendly, educated, and comes from a good family. I'll use Mayumi as an example. I don't think she'll mind. Mayumi comes from money. Her, her, her father has money. All right? And, you know, her husband, as a result of her father having money, when her husband wanted to build out his security company, he was able to go and kneel before her father and ask for a loan. And he was able to get that loan and build out his company. And you have to think about things like this. I'm not saying that he married her for money. However, it sure as heck didn't hurt. She's also mentioned that they have a prenup. Think about the logistics here, guys. We go out there and we marry these broke girls. We get in a relationship with these brokies that they cannot, if we don't take them out on dates, they don't eat that evening. All right? When you're messing around with, 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 these, with these girls who are brokies, a lot of times they do not know how to carry themselves. Compared to someone like Mayumi who comes from a family where it's all about self-respect and not shaming your family and not shaming your clan. And it doesn't have to be the word clan, but your lineage. Like a lot of these broke girls, they don't come, they come from broken homes. There was no father in the home. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't marry for money, but it does not hurt to marry into money. You should be able to take care of yourself. You should create your own worth. But you should not be getting into relationships with women who are brokies. I'm just being honest. Like you need to ask her what her credit score is. If her credit score is below a 700, you know, that's the end of the conversation right there. If you go on a date with her and she doesn't offer to pay, that's a no right there. I'm just being very, very clear. You know? If she expects you to do everything and provide everything in a relationship, if she's not trying to build something with you, that's a no right there. If she's not bringing any assets into the relationship, that's a no right there. Okay? Stop dating these girls who work at McDonald's. Stop dating these Starbucks baristas. Okay? Stop dating some... And it, listen to me. It doesn't just include them. Don't go running around with some of these MDs that have a half a million dollars in student loan debt. Those are not high-value women. Okay? A lot of them are struggling just to, just to eat every night. I, guys, when I used to work in insurance and I would deal with some of these women... They had such poor financial literacy. Like they were like, you have to help me. I haven't paid my haven't paid my insurance. And I'm like looking at their tax returns. I'm like, bro, uh, you have bigger problems than insurance. You are not properly paying your taxes. Cause I am, you know, I'm doing an audit on your account. I'm looking over your financial records and any and I can just basically see that 
you know, you're paying, you say that you're paying like a cleaning lady, like what, $15,000 a year, $20,000 a year. And when I look at your staff, like your staff, you know, you're between your, the people who work for you or work in your, work in your business, bro, there's not even a hundred thousand dollars here in expenses. We're talking about like 50 to $60,000 in expenses, your business, you know, the building that you're operating, you know, the, the, nothing adds up, you know, you're pulling in half a million dollars, but I don't see where the rest of the money is going, has gone. And you're asking me to help you out. You have bigger, tr you have bigger problems that, than being behind on your insurance. Like you have some serious problems with the IRS. Like how the hell do they even miss this, bro? Like you're supposed to be in civil, if not criminal court. Like you owe, you owe a lot of money in taxes. Okay, and then you don't even know how much. And if that's if this is the kind of lifestyle that they're living, what's their student loan debt like? All right, half a million dollars in student loan debt. Okay, half a million dollars or quarter of a million dollars. You know, and, and how many years have you been doing this? Like, you know, no, no, this is like years of like underpaying your taxes. Like, bro, you probably owe upwards of like seven hundred thousand dollars in taxes at this point. Because you've been in business a couple, for at least a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, you've been doing this a while. Yeah, bro, they're, they're going to put you in prison. They're going to put you in prison. You're, you're, you're done. And the thing is, like, the way that the IRS works, like, I'm looking at how much you actually owe on paper. We're not talking about the penalties or the compound interest. If we were to just, like, just a, a, a vague estimate, it's, it's, it's probably around 1.1, 1 1.2 1, 1 million with the penalties and interest that over this period of time. You know, at least, it's at least a million. But it may be as one as high as 1.1, 1.2. Yeah, you're cooked. You're cooked. Men need to stop messing around with these brokies. Stop messing around with these broke girls. You have women like this calling calling high value men losers. Guys, it's time to walk away. All right. If you want a relationship, go and find someone who is fit, feminine, friendly, and comes from money. I'm not saying that your goal should be to get access to her money. But it does not hurt to be in a relationship with someone who has money of their own and something to lose. Stop dating women who have nothing to lose. Stop doing it. Don't do it to yourself. A lot of men have had to learn this the hard way. There's a comedian that I there's a comedian I follow. I cannot remember his name, but maybe it's Gary Owens or something like that. But, you know, he was married to a black woman. And, you know, he would always talk about his relationship and his interracial kids. Guess what? His kids are grown now. He's still young. And, you know, he's basically divorcing his wife. And he's, he hasn't told us the story. He's like, but when it comes out, it's going to be, you're going to see exactly how serious it was. But anyway, you know, he said that there was a whole controversy. People were like, oh, he went and got himself a white girl after this. And he's like, no, 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 no. I'm still down with the hood, all right? Still down with the community. I can still go to the barbecues. I'm still exclusively going with dating black women. However, now I've changed the kinds of women that I date. I only date black women exclusively. However, I'm not dating Instagram baddies, okay? I don't shop for, I don't go looking for women on Instagram. I go looking for women on LinkedIn. Because if I go down, then she also has to have something to lose. If I'm going to lose everything, she also has to have something to lose. And this is what men are waking up and realizing that they're done dating these so called baddies that can't even afford dinner. They can't even afford McDonald's. They can't even afford an Uber ride home. OK. And that's a, that's a lot of women going forward are going to be in extraordinary destitution and poverty in the sham economy. Oh, the U.S. economy is not as bad as people thought it was. There's actually a lot of robust spending still happening. Everyone's living off credit right now. OK. People are doom spending right now. As soon as these people begin running out of liquidity, running out of credit. OK, first, they were living off the money that they got during the events of 2020. And a lot of people had a nice nest egg from that. All that garbage cash that was handed out. All right. 
And then they started living off credit after the after inflation became absolutely horrendous. And we are heading to a massive crash because people are still earning. People are earning less today than they were before the events of 2020. But the prices of things like food are now four times higher than they were in 2020. Rents are two to three times higher than they were in 20 than, than they were before 2020. So this is not going to last. I told like we're we're literally going to find a lot going like into the future when everything goes to hell, you're gonna have a lot of people becoming squatters. A lot of people are going to become squatters overnight. They're gonna stop paying the rent and they're just gonna squat in their apartment. And it's gonna take years to get them out. You see, when people go and take over these apartments, you know, that's when that's when all of this crazy stuff starts to happen. But if you're a landlord and someone's been living in there for years and they've been paying their rent on time for years and now they're like, yeah, I'm done. I'm not, I'm just not going to pay the rent. Basically they're passing the buck on to you. And they're because guys, people will have no money. People will have zero money. And in landlords continuing to raise the rent, the government is going to find people just living on the streets or living on public land. And, and, punishing them for doing it. So you have a couple of options. Either these people are going to squat, and I I don't like squatters. I think they're terrible. But a lot of people who are now honest, hardworking people, if they can't survive anymore, right, and it's through no fault of their own to say, oh, well, you know, to, if you had done better, you should, you know, and earn more money. And they're literally like, I'm spending four or $5,000 a month on rent. Uh, that's not my problem. That's not my fault. I've done everything I can. I have a master's degree. You should have gotten a better subject. I'm, I, I, guys, when, when this happens, you're just going to, guys, this is the reason why you have millennials telling Gen Zers that it's okay, kids, go and burn down society. Like, burn everything down. Like, you literally have, I made a video about it recently, where you have millennials that are telling Gen Zers to go and take, tear, tear it all down. Like, Gen Zers are freedom fighters. These are mentally these are mentally ill muffins, mentally ill muffins with anger issues. All right, they're not fighting for society. They're fight. They're they're basically they're having a they're having a, a tantrum. Okay, that's destroying society. That's helping to further destroy society. It's it, it's not their fault. It's not their fault what has happened, but they're only just making it worse. Okay, we are we are watching an extremely extreme decay, extraordinary decay. Now, the future of this, women going around calling men, calling high-value men losers and trying to destroy men overseas, their reputation overseas, and trying to demoralize them, it's only going to create a bigger rift between men and women where more men are just going. Guys, 70% of men are completely avoiding dating as it is. Only one in every 1,000 men are, are getting married in, in the United States right now. And women are still doing this because they want to demoralize these men. They want to tear down these men. They want to prevent these men from going overseas. They want to prevent these men from thinking that there's any hope out there. They want these men to serve and obey. That's why you have sim pastors saying serve and obey. And I know Mayumi, yeah, Mayumi said something like if her, if she and her sisters ran into this, into this, uh, into this Chinese, into this lady, uh, she, this lady would not have a, she would not have a good time in Japan. I'm telling y'all, this is, it's crazy. A lot of women are going to find themselves in, in poverty, destitution, you know, living in their cars, living in shelters, living on the street, living in the woods, because men are no longer going to, going to subsidize their living. They're not doing it, and the government doesn't have enough money to subsidize the living of women, women anymore. Maybe they'll get some food stamps, and in this inflation, you can't really buy anything with that. Like, think about this very carefully. The cost of food has gone up by three to four times, really around four times. Some cases more, depending on the item. But on average, it's gone up around three to four times since the events of 2020. And yet, what are food, food stamps are not much more than they were four years ago. If they kept up with inflation, you would be getting at least $750 a month in food stamps right now. And you're not. So who the heck can live off food stamps? It's, it's crazy, guys. This is just the reality we live in. Women are not going to be able to survive in this economy. They are not going to be able to survive as more men walk away. And as soon as those jobs, as soon as everything starts to crash and it's, it becomes 
clear. And employers are like, okay, yeah, now we're just going to start firing everyone. The, the moment the next recession hits, it's going to be, a, it'll, it'll be a depression. We're already in a depression. But once everyone wakes up to it, there's nothing. And, and all of those jobs will vanish. They will never come back. Because employers will use it as a employers will use it as an opportunity to replace all of those jobs with AI as rapidly as they can. And you'll end up with a lot of women trying to get public assistance. It won't be there for them. And they have to prop up the they keep on propping up the real estate market because that's all they have. And if the value of real estate starts to collapse, if the housing, if the housing market collapses, they'll further just they'll further drop the economy into a uh, into an even deeper depression. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying the content, consider subscribing to our newsletter for my personal thoughts, insights, and a free copy of my ebook, The Blueprint for Escaping the Rat Race. Click the link in the description to get your free copy. Guys, women are calling high-value men losers. Let me know what you think regarding this, and we'll talk about it in the comments. Like the video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe, and if you like the video, share the video. And just remember that all roads lead to MWA, men walking away. And cheers. <laughs>